Welcome to our professional development session for today. I'm Judy Summers and your host for today's session is Daniel. And so if you're joining us online, Daniel will be the one that will respond to any questions that you have. Uh, you should see a hand down there. And if you want to raise your hand, he will unmute you. And he will also give you a link uh, in just a little while for um, a Padlet that we're going to be using. So <clears throat> thank you for joining us for this session today. Within this session, we are going to share some strategies, going to take a, a look at some new ideas, and then select one new idea to try. But first, I have a little story to tell you about a couple of uh, friends who are absolutely amazing instructors. Now, let's just say that these are instructors at mm, a mid-size institution in, uh, <clears throat> how about the sunny south? And these two instructors are uh, Professor Amazing and Dr. Superhero. And these two instructors teach for the same department, but they don't teach the same courses. And that department, oh, your department? Oh, well, it, that's right. It's, oh, no, I won't say a word. Um, <clears throat> so these imaginary instructors um, teach for the same department, but not the same course. And so they spend some time collaborating because, as you know, all effective instructors definitely collaborate with their colleagues in order to improve what they do and in order to make it uh, help them learn some new tips, share their good, share their successes, as well as their concerns. So. Um, <clears throat> Professor Amazing and Dr. Superhero were uh, collaborating fairly recently, actually. And um, Professor Amazing said, you know, I'm feeling just a little bit overwhelmed right now. And his friend said, really? What's up with that? That's not like you. Professor Amazing said, yeah, I know. But, you know, it's coming close to the end of the semester. And I'm getting bogged down with grading. There just doesn't seem to be enough time. Dr. Superhero said, you know, I understand exactly what you're saying, because in addition to all of that, it's also coming close to the holidays. And we know how stressful that can be. <clears throat> Let's see if we can figure out something to to help us get through this time and make it uh, a much more pleasant experience for us. Since they had been involved with the Center for E-Learning, they decided to make a visit to the Center for E-Learning to see, and it was Friday, of course, so it was open lab. So they decided that perhaps somebody over there would be able to give them some tips or some strategies, some things to, to help them. <clears throat> When they got there, they discovered that a couple of the people in the lab were tied up in meetings with professors. They also realized that there were a couple in that absolutely awesome video studio. And as it turned out, there was only one person left that could help them with it. So they sat down and explained their concerns to her. And she said, you know, I don't think I'm the right person to help you with this because I have challenges in that area myself. But the more they talked, the more they decided that between them, they could come up with some ideas. And they had actually discussed a few things that came up with them on their way over. So as they talked, they decided they needed to write some ideas, some of these ideas down so they had it on paper. And so they went to uh, Padlet. And when they did, they decided to write some things down. So I'm going to direct you also to go to that Padlet. <clears throat> 
and uh, there's the link and Daniel is sharing that link with you as well. And so when you get into that Padlet, let me get there too. <clears throat> you will see um, three columns actually. In the first column is where our friends have written down their tips. What I would like for you to do while we're talking about their tips is go to column number two. And if you click on the plus sign, you will get a place to jot down any ideas, any tips, any uh, stress relief or <clears throat> time management tips that you have that you can share with all of us. And so while you're doing that, we'll talk about the ideas that, that our friends had. <clears throat> Dr. Superhero was saying that uh, she remembered that when they built their courses through the Center for eLearning, there were a lot of things actually within the whole Canvas course that could be beneficial to them. Um, so she started thinking about all the things in that Canvas course that were helpful. <clears throat> There's that uh, setting up that, that frequently asked questions discussion board or ask the class discussion board. That way one response can answer everyone and often the students help each other out with that too. The to-do list within each module she said was really an excellent tool. It gives you a really clear direction and it helps the students completely get through. Um, and of course, setting the rules and expectations for the students, giving them a roadmap to their own success, the policies, the etiquette, access to the university resources, all those things are right there contained within that Canvas course. And so the students can get help for whatever they need almost immediately. Even the tools and the technology that's within Canvas is a big help. Uh, the rubrics uh, make grading so easy and, and uh, provide a way of putting the, uh, the feedback and giving tips to them. Um, there's often opportunities for students to do just a quick self check and even in tests and quizzes, um, most of them can be automated. And peer review, what a great way for students to help each other out. So um, she also said that the communication tools within Canvas were such a big help. And of course, the syllabus is where the, 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 the students guide for all of those things. So as we were talking, as they were talking about that, uh, Professor Amazing said that he had been talking with some colleagues recently and they had come up with some things too. They had said that um, <laughs> don't reinvent, use the resources that are there for you. What a great idea. Uh, release any guilt that you have, set your, your time frames and just let go of that. <clears throat> Set your boundaries, though, of course, set your working hours, your online hours, set out blocks of time. Um, they were talking about quite a few really good ideas. Um, make sure that your students understand your um, online availability, when you're going to be there for them and what your turnaround response time is. Communicate, communicate, communicate. And then once you set all those guidelines, stick to it. So while they were talking and jotting down their ideas, um, it occurred to us that we also had some tips from our recent decertification workshop. So I put in a few of the tips, the comments that came from our e-certification friends, <clears throat> things that they felt were really beneficial, help helping help them with uh, the time management and the other ideas within there. They said uh, feedback on the grading. What a great opportunity to, to help students not make the same mistakes twice. Uh, the course calendar, of course, is a really, really dynamic, effective planning and management tool. 
they even mentioned in there that the discussion forums, giving giving them due dates, processing time, and off times, uh, their peers will give them constructive comments within that discussion forum. Um, Canvas, of course, has at some that were mentioned some collaboration tools that were really excellent. And uh, even group work is a great way of helping students manage their time and helping them work with each other to, to resolve some of those concerns. Another thing that was mentioned is the idea of virtual presentations. They can create their presentation and then post it in the course and so that everyone else can look at it at their own convenience. So what a great time saver. And so I'm looking, let me refresh so that I can uh, see all of the ideas that you have posted. Um, and um, one of the tips that I added in that's something that I discovered a while back was a Kanban cord, Kanban board. Uh, this came from a, a Padlet. Uh, uh, blog post and I had not heard of it. So I went in and tried it and I'm going to show you. It seems to be a um, obviously a variation of, of what had what many organizations use as a whiteboard. But the Kanban cord is set up so that you have a, your to do list what things you might need to accomplish that list, what things you are doing and uh, are work in progress, and then move it over to the um, to the completion. And within the Padlet, it's pretty easy to just shift things around once they are, no, I'll put it back over here, but once they are, uh, once they are done in there. Uh, Mary, is that, a new idea or is that something that you um, want to add to the tips? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Hello, everybody. Uh, if you want to add it to the tips, that's fine. <laughs> I just didn't know kind of where to write it. Oh, <clears throat> that column I had as okay. a for after oh, we, do, we talk okay. about other ideas, but that's okay. This is fine. Okay. So you want to share it now or you want to share it later? Um, OK, let's go for now. Um, I would say that um, one of my big issues was staying organized. And I would put it off from semester to semester. And it really pays off to take the time to get your files organized. Uh, the, the migration to Canvas gave us all that opportunity and uh, I have seen how our faculty members are way happier when they have their files and there is a logical structure uh, of how these files are organized within their courses. So it really helped me uh, and I know it actually helped our faculty. So it may be a, a little time consuming at first, but it really just it's something that you do once or you do regularly once you have created a structure. If you don't know how to do that, we at the Center for eLearning will be happy of course. to help you. Yeah, um, and the filing system is a much, much easier to use in Canvas than it ever was in Blackboard. I, I never went there in Blackboard, but Canvas, it's pretty easy to set up and pretty easy to use. Mm -hmm. So that that um, it's my number one thing. Um, OK, and then <laughs> I would say as we grade, as we provide feedback, with time kind of create a repository of what you have said before that you can reuse have an inventory of your common issues that your students are facing time after time and maybe create micro lectures for that or even use resources that students from previous courses have have created because it really helps for them to hear how another student approached 
and solved an issue. So if you can get permission to use those resources and you're again organized in having a repository of uh, feedback ideas and techniques that will also help with your time. And I like the idea of sharing resources from previous students yes. with permission, of course, as you yes. say. That's a great yes. one. That is a great one. Okay, so uh, let's go back to our story. And uh, I will let you know that um, Professor Amazing shared with uh, the people he was talking to that he had been doing some research for a conference recently that he attended, and he found a couple of really interesting articles that kind of tied in with this. So let's see what his uh, amazing research was. One of them was begin with the end in mind, and that's a favorite mantra of mine because if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to know how to get there. But with this, within this article that he found, <clears throat> it was thinking about what matters the most to you and working toward that. Uh, the other, another item that he mentioned was uh, doing the first things first, focus your time, your, your larger chunks of time on the things that are important, and then uh, rank your tasks in order of importance so that you do get the most important ones done. Uh, we have the calendar put up here because it was a reminder from this article that he, he shared with us that um, it's more important to keep your planner and your calendar in front of you than your to-do list. People can get really bogged down with the to-do list. For me, they, it kind of it bugs me. And for whatever reason, they keep, seem to keep getting longer then uh, I, I tend to add more than I take off of it. So keeping, um, keeping your planner and setting aside your blocks of time when you have the most energy is an is a, uh, excellent way for, for uh, keeping focused on that. And in addition to that, an article that he read indicated that uh, it's even a good idea to set a timer and give yourself that block of time and then stick to it. And of course, we all know that we can push that reset button, but at least it's an, an awareness issue. It reminds you of that. Uh, the other item is to, um, to set, this one is to set your most concrete items first. If you put on your list that you're going to write that report for the uh, advisory board meeting, that's hours, if not days. But if you break it down into the chunks and put those chunks in order, then it will fall into place a little bit better. I have the rocks over here as a reminder from the article that Professor Amazing shared that um, the a reminder of, for one thing, the big rock story. I'm sure you have all heard of it. Um, a professor was in front of a class with a, a jar and he put some big rocks into the jar and he asked the class, so is this, rock, is this jar full? And they said, well, yeah, of course it's full. He said, nope, wrong. He took some smaller rocks and was able to put some more of those in. And he said, is it full now? Mm. And they said, uh, maybe. And he said, no. And he put some smaller, some pebbles down in there. So is it full now? They quickly caught on and said, nope, nope, not full yet. And he said, right. And filled it up with water. <clears throat> so someone asked him, so what? <laughs> What's the point of that? No matter how much you do, you can always do more. And the professor said, not at all. Put the big rocks in first and everything else falls into place. Focus on those big ones. So the rocks also are there to remind me to mention that in this article that he shared with us, though there was the recommendation to chunk maybe rock to chunk the 
in the, all of the like things together. For example, if you have some phone calls to return, go ahead and get them all done at the same time. And of course, email is something that can just take a lot out of our time. And so the recommendation was to go through your emails and, and set uh, prioritize them. Set it up with um, the things that are action items, things that you need to reply to, things that maybe th something that you can archive and things that you can delete. And then while you're in that email, go back into those action items and start clicking things off so that you can work through it and then set the email aside and get on with the other things. I kind of liked uh, like that idea, but what I liked even more was the one that that he came up with from another article he found. Um, reminders of of your efficiency that will give you peace of mind is to keep a balance between getting things done and enjoying the moment. Set yourself time for both of them. And uh, I love this idea. I will uh, work for a little while and then get up and go just stand out on the porch and look out at the lake or look at the sunrise. So I think those are some some really, uh, really important things to uh, to think about and remember. So that said, I'm going to take us back to the Padlet and see if there's anything, uh, a new tip that you may have found. Let me take you there. If there's a new tip that you have found, no, that's not this one. Um, so take just a moment and see if you have come up with something new to try. I'm definitely going to add the uh, alternate between getting things done and enjoying the moment because that one resonates with me to the extent even that I found a book that says how intelligence increases when you think less. I love that idea. And it literally does mean to um, ponder, to, to th let, think things through, mull them over for a little while. And that really is what I did as I was working on this particular presentation, because there's lots of things in here that I need some guidance with. So um, it's important to me to create it in a in a in a uh, a visual. I I typically do a uh, mind map or a concept map, and jot down the things on there that I want to think about, and then set it aside and let it let it mull over. So, uh, hair brain tortoise mind is the name of that book. So. Uh, I see Mary has added some things in. Are you still writing or do you want to share with us? So these are the, um, can you hear me? Yes. These are the two ones that magically resonated with me. Because <laughs> I am a to-do li to list kind of person. And if you concentrate on the to-do list, you get really anxious. But I really liked what you said about instead of thinking about what you need to do, think about how you're going to get it done by setting these blocks of time on your calendar. This was to me eye opening. And then um, when you said when you talked about that report and breaking it, it down into achievable pieces, then you can match those blocks of time to those and 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 then you will get you'll see how you uh, map it out on through your day or your week or whatever the the time is that you're setting yourself for for something i think that that's really helpful excellent thank you and i know we have a few other people online even if you uh don't want to add to the padlet please feel free to uh Raise your hand and let Daniel know if you'd like to uh, to talk and share some ideas with us. I'm we're always I am always looking for new tips and tricks, and I will be more than happy to share them with Professor Amazing and uh, Dr. Superhero too when I see them next. Right? Well, 
based on what we've had, it is now my turn to say, Kazam, you are the superhero now. You have come up with some new ideas, some tips, some things that are going to help you through this time crunch as we move into the end of the semester and as we move through the holidays, because having in relaxing and enjoying this time is really, really an important, an important piece of it. So thank you for joining myself and my two uh, instructor friends on this journey. We appreciate the fact that you have now conned down that winding road yourself. This is uh, the list of the references and they will uh, be coming out in the uh, email that you will receive in uh, a, a little while later today. And so coming attractions next week, helping the struggling online learner. The following week, this riveting topic of education policies and their impact on higher ed. You may have noticed in my uh, Candan board, that uh, finding some information about this topic is high on my priority list between now and December the 11th. And then uh, the 18th, just before we uh, break for our um, uh, the end of the semester, we'll have a, a, a reflection on the semester. So thank you. I appreciate the fact that you were willing to take the time today and join us. Thank you so much.